know how we all love to ride and how we all love to listen to music when we ride. And sometimes we don't want to put a big bulky radio. So these MP3 players are great. And so are cell phones. I've got another alternative on how to get this in your ear. You know what it's like when we're riding down a highway, all the wind. But this thing will take care of it. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing just fine. How are you? Tell me about your product and what you do. Well, the product that you're referring to today, we call these our eye plugs. Uh, it's a little steel on the iPod name. But basically, these are a custom-made headphone. They are fit directly to that person's ear. So they're going to fit one person and one person only. But they're going to give you the utmost in sound quality because you're going to get a little bit of the blockage uh, from the wind noise. You're going to get about a 20 to 30 decibel reduction in that noise. But you're also going to get the sound. And the sound quality is going to be transmitted right to your eardrum through this little tube. So you're going to get the best possible sound quality. And they, and they fit small enough down into the bowl of your ear to where you can still pull your helmet down. Uh, I use them for a number of different things. Uh, traveling when I'm on an airplane. I use them when I'm cutting the grass. Uh, if you're a runner or a bicycle rider, they're great too because they won't fall out. And what do you do? You make a mold and then make the product? Yes. We actually have a... We take an impression material and we'll make a mold of your ear and then we'll send it off to our laboratory and they'll form it so that it fits just perfectly. Now, can they make these molds at home and send them to you? We do have a kit available. We can send you a kit. Uh, we'll send you the impression material. Uh, you just need a helper to help you uh, inject it down into your ear and they can send it back to us and we'll take care of it for them. Now, how can people get a hold of you uh, to have one of these made? They can contact us on our website. It's uh, www.active-ears.com. Or our parent company is Ear Inc. Uh, we're a provider for them, and they're the ones that came up with this great product. Well, now that's a pretty nifty gadget to have. And while we're on the subject of helmets, let's check out a second part of a series with Impact Racing and Bill Simpson to find out what helmet ratings mean to the rider on the street. How do you rate a helmet? What's the difference between one rating and another, and how are they tested? Well, there's, there's uh, several ratings, but the, the one that's the most common is DOT, what they call the DOT. DOT. Um, you go from a DOT to ASTM, and from that you go to a Snell certification or FIA. And that's, that's the most difficult helmet there is to pass anything, and it's the best, obviously. Um, and the difference is impact attenuation. DOT helmets are tested at a, the equivalent of about 10, 11 miles an hour. A Snell helmet is in the neighborhood of 80 miles an hour impact attenuation tests, and um, everything in between. So, as you can imagine, one's basically seven or eight times more difficult to pass than the other. So, and then there's, uh, there's other helmets that are basically, uh, they have DOT tags on them, but they, they wouldn't protect you from anything. We're, yeah, and in, in the motorcycle community, we call those novelty helmets. <coughs> well, basically, they're just a plastic shell. Yeah, and they still have a DOT tag on them, you know, so you really bust your ass in one of them things. You know, in a race car, you have some high-speed crashes. And on a motorcycle, you're involved in the crash. You're part of the machine, basically. You get thrown off, you hit a, a telephone pole. So some of the impacts that a motorcycle rider in a crash uh, could be greater than what a race driver feels in some of the crashes that they have at 200 mile an hour. Well, that, that's true. Uh, however, uh, if, you, if you take... Uh, a guy that comes off a motorcycle at 70 miles an hour, we don't have any idea how many G's that they take before they hit a, a curb because it's never been tested. We do know, however, like uh, a 200 mile an hour impact, like at a 26 degree angle into a wall, sometimes generates uh, energy numbers that are 160 or 170 G's in four milliseconds. And that's not enough to put you to sleep. 300 G's is enough to put you to sleep. If I was a motorcycle rider, I would look for the best. If you're going to wear a helmet, you might as well wear the best helmet you can get. You can always count on Steel Horse to bring you the latest in the motorcycling scene straight from the source. In the coming weeks, we'll find out what's next with Impact. I'd like to thank Bill Simpson for taking time out to show us the difference in these helmets. And now it's time for this week's Bike of the Week. Brought to you by Pat Kendall Agency, Indy's local motorcycle insurance expert. Okay, we got another old bike for you for this week's Bike of the Week. It belongs to Brian Summer. And this is pretty cool. Thank you. It's a 1975 Goldwing. It's the first year they made him the GL1000. How long have you had it? I've had it about three years. Have you restored it, or has it always been in this shape? No, I've restored it. I bought it from a farmer uh, in Indiana, northern Indiana, and tore it down and refurbished it, put it all back to original, 
except the seat in the sissy bar is not the is the only thing that's not original on the bike. Yeah, but you can just unbolt that if you need to show it. Yeah, that is correct. Yeah, I have the original seat that came on it too, so I do have everything that goes with it. Do you do a lot of rides throughout the summer? We try to do some. We don't do as near as many as we want to, but uh, we do a lot of riding individually by ourselves and our friends up north. Well, I'll tell you what, you got a really cool bike, something to be proud of. Take good care of it, buddy. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Congratulations, guys. The bike looks good. Have fun on it. Angela, I'm hungry. I am too, Steve, and lucky for you, I heard Eddie's Cafe is a great place to eat. As hungry as I am, we got to hold off for one more thing. It's time for this week's Lady North Law trivia question. Which of these is not a type of motorcycle? Bobber, chopper, dipper, or springer? Stay tuned. The answer right after this question. 